Okay, um, why don't we get started? Um, good morning. As I said, I'm Eric Barassa, the uh, Director of Transportation with MAPC, and I will be uh, chairing the meeting today. This is the Notice of Non-Discrimination. Uh, you're invited to participate in our transportation planning process, regardless of your race, color, national origin, including limited English proficiency, religion, creed, gender, and ancestry, ethnicity, disability, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender, identity, or expression, veteran status, or background. And the, you can read the full notice on the webpage. Um, the accessibility statement, uh, this meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Zoom products are compliant with exceptions with the following standards, web content accessibility guidelines 2.1, level AA standards, and revised section 508 standards. If you require any additional recommend, any additional accommodations in order to participate fully in this meeting, or if you have any technical difficulties, please contact Abby Catrumbers, Katrum MPO staff at A-C-U-T-R-U-M-B-E-S at C-T-P-S dot O-R-G, or you can call her at 857-702- Three six eight two, or message her in the chat box. Guidelines for today's meeting. All participants will join the meeting with muted microphones. Please rename yourself to include your first name, last name, and affiliation. After the roll call, board members may mute and unmute themselves. Always remain muted unless actively speaking. To participate in the discussion, please select the raise hand function. Find this by clicking either on the participants button at the bottom of the screen and a window will pop up for the raised hand button at the bottom or the reactions button in the toolbar. And as chair, I will then call on participants. And if you're on the phone, you can use the star nine feature to raise your hand. So let's start with introductions. Thank you. Uh, Mass.seat seat one. Uh, yep, Derek Cravat here. I will be representing Mass.C1 today. Thank you. Thank you. Mass.C2. Next is Mass.Highway Division. I'll call on uh, MBTA. Good morning. Sandy Johnson representing General Manager Philang in the MBTA. Thank you. Uh, MAPC. Uh, good morning, Eric Barassa with MAPC. MBTA Advisory Board. Uh, morning, Brian Kane with the MBTA Advisory Board. Uh, next is Massport. Hi, good morning. This is Sarah Lee representing Massport. Thank you. <clears throat> advisory Council. I'm Leonard Diggins, Advisory Council here. City of Boston, BPD. Jen Rowe representing the City of Boston and Mayor Michelle Wu. City of Boston Planning Department. Uh, this is Matthew Moran representing the City of Boston and Mayor Wu. Next is at large City, City of Everett. Good morning, Jay Monty representing Mayor Di Maria and the City of Everett. At large City, City of Newton. Good morning, I'm David Kozis representing Mayor Ruth Ann Fuller and the City of Newton. At large town, town of Arlington. Good morning. This is John Alessi representing Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy in the town of Arlington. At large town, town of Brookline. Good morning. This is Aaron Chute representing the town of Brookline and Select Board Chair Bernard Green. Inner Core Committee, City of Somerville. Good morning, uh, Tom Bent, uh, City of Somerville representing uh, Mayor Ballantyne in the Inner Core. Minuteman Advisory Group on Interlocal Coordination, Town of Acton. Good morning, Kristen Guichard, representing Acton Select Board Chair Fran Arsenal for the Magic Subregion. Uh, we will go back uh, to MassDOT uh, C2. Good morning, everyone. John Bashad representing Highway Administrator Jonathan Gulliver, present. Sorry for the delay. I had to reboot right at 10 o'clock. It just wouldn't connect. No problem. Happens to all of us. Metro West Regional Collaborative, City of Framingham. Dennis Giambetti representing Metro West. North Shore Task Force, City of Beverly. 
Arlene Nguyen, representing Mayor Cahill and the North Shore Task Force. North Suburban Planning Council, Town of Burlington. Next is South Shore Coalition, Town of Hull. Uh, good morning, Chris Diorio, uh, representing Hull Select Board Chair Owen Nessoff for the South Shore Coalition. Southwest Advisory Planning Committee, Town of Rentham. And then uh, next is Three Rivers Interlocal Council, Town of Norwood. Good morning, Tom O'Rourke from the Town of Norwood, representing the TRIC subregion. Federal Highway Administration. Federal Transit Administration. Good morning, welcome everyone. And I will pass it back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so now uh, we don't have a chair's report today. So we're gonna skip that and go to uh, the executive director's report. Tegan. Thanks Eric and thanks, hello everyone. Um, I have a couple of different items to cover today. So stick with me, I hope you'll find them interesting. Um, just, to just to kind of summarize it, we'll introduce a few new staff members. I want to give you a few highlights about our recent transportation finance activities and where some of those reports are now available on the web. Um, give you a couple highlights of last week when I went to the AMPO, the National Association of MPO board retreat. Um, give a quick grant update um, and then make a few announcements about agendas and upcoming meetings. So first off, if we can go to the next slide, please. We'd like to introduce two new colleagues who have started within the last several weeks. And to do that, what I'll do is I'll turn it over to each of the, the managers who oversee their teams to introduce them individually. So first, um, I'd like to pass it off to Sarah Philbrick, the manager of the MPO planning and policy team to introduce Priyan Priyanka Chapekar. So Sarah, if I could pass it off to you. Thanks, Tegan. And uh, want to welcome Priyanka to her first board meeting. Priyanka started last week as our new congestion management process program manager. Um, she joins us after getting her master's from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in uh, regional planning. Before that, she worked um, or in planning. And before that, she worked as a architect um, in India and has also done a stint with an MPO in Washington State working on their CMP process. So she'll be reaching out to the CMP committee soon um, to introduce herself more directly to that committee and to schedule our, our first meeting. That's great. Thanks, Sarah. Is, is Priyanka here to just sort of unmute and say hello so folks can see your face? I'm not sure if she was able to attend. Yes, sure. Hello, good morning. Hi, Thank Priyanka. you for that introduction, Sarah. Great. Thank you, Priyanka. Thanks for saying hello to folks so they can see your face. I appreciate it. Um, okay, with that, I'll then pass it off to Dave Hong. He's the manager, of course, of the MPO Activities team, and he'll introduce Adriana Jacobson. Thank you, Tegan. Um, introducing Adriana Jacobson, she joined the MPO Activities team as an assistant transportation planner focused on the capital plan programming side of the TIP. Working alongside Ethan, she is learning and contributing rapidly and also meeting with many of our MPO uh, partners and stakeholders. Adriana will work closely on the community connections and transit transformation funding programs. Uh, before joining us, Adriana interned in a number of urban and transportation planning roles, including at Stantec, uh, the Urban Mobility Group, Keolis Community Services, on the innovation team, Nelson Nygaard for the transit and multimodal team and the city of Newton actually in the planning department briefly. Uh, most recently, Adriana also led route setting as a head route setter at Metro Rock Climbing Center in Everett. Uh, she has a bachelor's and a master's in city planning from MIT. Uh, we're very um, happy to have her on board. Um, and if she is, uh, online, I would um, just pass the, the baton just to turn on camera and say hello. If not, um, we'll resume. Adriana, are you on? Yes, I'm on. Thank you, David, for the introduction. And hello, I'm Adriana, and it's nice to meet everybody. And I'm excited to work and connect with the board in the next coming months on the, on the tip. Thanks both. And um, Adriana, the most important part of your career, uh, Metro Rock and Everett was one of my favorite climbing gyms. I was a member there for many, many years. Um, so welcome both Priyanka and Adriana and board members, please, you know, say hello as you have the opportunity to. Um, very excited to have these two on our team. All right, um, next slide, please. 
All right, so next I wanted to provide a few updates on the MPO work in the area of transportation finance, which I know has been of interest to this board and of course continues to be an extremely timely topic, um, very relevant um, in our region and also in the state as a whole. So first, um, the first bullet here, I wanted to, to share with everybody that to capture, you know, sort of our body of work in this area in a more easily accessible location, we've created a trending topics page on the MPO website. And this is a page that we can update over time, but right now an incredibly relevant trending topic is of course, um, transportation finance. So the site is bostonmpo.org forward slash trending. And the page right now has descriptions and links to two of the reports that you are already aware of. Um, the first is the lessons from roadway pricing experiences study, which was completed back in December of 2023. Um, but on this page is a link to a redesigned version of it as, long, as well as a two page summary so that's kind of an easy, quick access way to see the key learnings from this study. So I welcome you to visit that. And then we've also now posted on that webpage the June 2024 MBTA Sources of Community Value Study, which, um, as you know from a presentation back in February, outlines a range of potential transit funding strategies. So after it was previewed for the board in February, it was ultimately delivered to the MBTA board last month, or actually two months ago now, I guess, since it's August um, in June. And now we've been able to post that report to the web page. So just now bringing us to the second bullet, which is recent activities. Um, I just I want to say that these, these reports have received some great media attention, given the quality of the work that staff has done for them and also the timeliness of it. So we've been working to sort of push, push awareness of those studies. Um, I already mentioned the MBTA board presentation in June. And after that, that report was shared with the governor's transportation funding task force, which I hope will be useful for their work. And then in addition, um, we were asked as the MPO to participate on a panel for the Boston City Council hearing on congestion pricing that was held back on July 8th. That hearing was called by Councillor Tanya Fernandez Anderson. And um, there were testimonies from the invited experts. In addition to us, there's a professor from UCLA, um, Brookings Institution rep, and also um, Jared Johnson from Transit Matters. And there was a very extended Q&A period with the counselors that I thought was um, interesting and really useful. Um, for myself as the representative of the MPO's research there, I focused on sharing the lessons learned from the MPO funded research on the roadway pricing schemes across the US and also how we might continue to explore those kinds of options um, and that kind of work in the Boston region. So how we might continue to do that. So I just wanted to express my, my thanks to the board members for your continued interest in this area of work. Um, as MPO staff, we're looking forward to working with you to continue to build this sort of this body of knowledge um, and resources in this area of transportation finance. And I think it's really important that we do do so as a regional agency that's coordinating the interest of 97 municipalities, the state, the ABTA, RTAs, and of course, other regional and local stakeholders. So this, this topic area is really at the sweet spot, I feel, of what we do. And so we'll just we'll continue along with the work. Um, next slide, please. Um, last week, <clears throat> great, thanks, Jen, for your comment. Um, last week, um, I also attended a board retreat. It's a two-day retreat that we hold every year since I'm a member of the AMPO board. That's the National the Association of Metropolitan Planning Organizations. Um, and I just wanted to give a few highlights from that retreat last week. Um, in addition to the usual business, we did discuss some new and evolving activities. Um, the first bullet point, I just wanted to highlight some interesting momentum that's been building for AMPO and the way that it's really been able to provide value to its members, including us, the Boston Region MPO. Their membership now includes over or about two thirds of the over 400 MPOs in the country. So as a member that actually gives us quite a bit of access to a network of peer agencies across the country, um, thought that was a really interesting kind of marker or, or um, benchmark that they, they've hit as, a, as an organization. Um, another highlight is that AMPO has launched its AMPO Institute, which is meant to be an educational arm of AMPO to help not only staff, but also board members um, and staff of other agencies like state and federal agencies learn more about MPOs and what they do. They currently have two paid courses. One is a 101 for MPOs and the other is a federal funding course. So I just wanted to highlight that as something we can continue to consider for you know, further staff and board member engagement and development in the future. And then my last highlight from the board retreat is that um, they're really engaging with MPOs to understand what's most useful for us in the next transportation reauthorization. 
I think I've brought this up lightly with this board in the past to keep you up to date. Um, it may seem still a ways away and that the IAJA or the BIL is set to expire on September 30th, 2026, but um, it takes a long time to have these conversations and to sort of work to, to include what, you know, what we need in those bills. And so just to kind of highlight some of the things they're focusing on is in terms of MPO needs is the stabilization of the existing funding levels that were established in the BIL, which were quite unprecedented. But by stabilizing them, um, looking to shift more of the discretionary funding to formula funding where it is reasonable. So it's more reliable and sustainable going forward. They're also um, having conversations with MPOs around um, working to establish less requirements around local matches and also the requirements sort of around funding pass-throughs for MPOs in terms of using federal funds. So it's a very interesting space to be talking about. And um, I also wanted to inform the board that I have reapplied for a board position on AMPO for the next three years. So I should find out about whether or not um, I'm successful in that application later this year. And I'm also looking forward along with other staff to attend this year's annual conference, which will be in September. And we're sending more staff than we have in the past. Um, this year, we're sending um, five additional staff which will give us more of an opportunity to interact with peers, um, which include not only MPOs, but also federal employees and state employees who attend the conference, who are all interested in working together to figure out how to improve um, how MPOs are able to um, allocate funds in a region. So very excited and, and happy to give you those updates. Um, next slide, please. So last couple items are just a bit quicker. Um, wanted to share with you that we've issued a press release um, on how the, the fact that we were selected to receive the Mobility Access and Transportation and Security Grant, the MADI Grant. We gave you a highlight on this before when we were awarded the grant initially. Um, but the press release was nice in that we were able to feature some quotes from some of the key partners on the grant, including good to go and Union Capital. And we're still awaiting news now on other pending applications. So we will share those with the board um, when we do receive news that we can share with you all. Next slide, please. Before we get into today's agenda, I wanted to make a distinct announcement that we would like you to save the date. We have um, reserved a date for the annual meeting. This will be our second annual meeting for November 14th um, at 10 o'clock in the morning, the usual time um, on a Thursday, but the November 14th date is, I think the second Thursday of the month. So I wanted to get this out into your calendars now um, please, we'll keep the other dates in the calendar for our usual meetings for now, and we'll come back to them later if um, we need to sort of change any of those other meetings. Um, but please save the date for the annual meeting, November 14th at 10 a.m. We will hold that meeting in person with a, a virtual participation option. Next slide, please. All right, so for today, um, we have another an action item around another TIP amendment for the current federal fiscal year 24 to 28 TIP. Um, this will be a presentation and a request to waive the public comment period um, for an amendment um, with a direct vote to endorse. Dave will be Dave Hong will be presenting on this and explaining the reason for asking to waive the public comment period. It has to do with a transit earmark, um, new money related to the Wonderland multimodal project. And then we will also have presentations. One will be on the progress update on the updated MOU, the MPO's MOU. We'll walk through the MOU update committee's work to, um, to update the overall governance document for the MPO. We'll summarize the revisions that they have worked together with staff to make and um, ask for your input and review of those updates. And then lastly, we'll have a presentation on municipal elections, which will be given by Eric Barasa um, from MAPC. So he will give you some updates on the election procedures and nomination forms and the seats that are up for election in this year. Next slide, please. And then please, of course, the, hold the date for the usual next meeting date. It will be on August 15th. Um, at that meeting, we will likely have a UPWP amendment, which is kind of our usual amendment process towards the end of each federal fiscal year. when We make adjustments to where money sits within the UPWP to effectively spend out the remainder of the funding for the federal fiscal year. We'll also have likely some additional tip amendment activities. Um, and if you're ready, we'll ask you to release the updated MOU out for public comment before fully endorsing it after that public comment. And then we may also have a couple of presentations. And that, um, Eric, was it. I'm happy to answer any questions if folks have them. Any questions for Tegan? Brian Kane. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Tegan, thank you. Just wanted to um, 
second what you said about the uh, the the reports that that you were presented uh, or that have been presented both to the city council in Boston as well as to the task force and the T, the, 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 the sources of value stuff is incredibly important as I think we all knew it would be when we first heard it in February. And the fact that it sort of was kept under wraps until now is, is really been a disappointment, but the fact that it's out now and that we are being able to get this information is incredibly important. And I think uh, we, we've all heard that, that we have to have every bit of information available to those of us who um, have to make decisions, including this MPO. So I just wanted to applaud you for that. Uh, also, just wanted to give a quick update just to follow on very briefly that uh, there's been some talk about the MARTA funding formula at the task force uh, that we really need to get a hold of. Um, it's one of those formulas that I think has been lost to time. Uh, and so at some point, we'll have to figure that whole thing out. But uh, that is also on the agenda. But Tegan, thanks for, for leading on this incredibly important process. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Brian. Okay, um, not seeing any other hands raised. Um, we will go to public comments. If there's any members of the public that would like to comment on uh, any of the agenda items, you can raise your hand, you can comment now. Uh, you can also raise your hand during the discussion uh, and after members have uh, spoken, I will call on you. So not seeing any hands raised, um, we will go to committee chairs reports. Are there any committee chairs that would like to give a report out? Derek Kabat. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to let folks know that the Unified Planning Work Program Committee will be meeting a week from today on Thursday, August 8th um, at 1 p.m. Um, and the details and agenda are listed on the MPO meeting calendar. Um, but the main item, uh, as Tegan alluded to, will be the UPWP amendment for fiscal year 2024, um, just to reallocate funds between tasks as we approach the end of the federal fiscal year. So uh, that's all. I'll turn it back to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Uh, Jen Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd... Uh... Speaking here on behalf of the Tipper Committee, I'd like to thank uh, fellow board members for a very productive conversation at our most recent MPO meeting about how to start advancing ideas we've generated to improve the TIP development process. Um, and I'm looking forward to strategizing further around one of those themes, which was informed decision making um, at our next Tipper meeting. Previously, that was announced um, to be August 8th, um, but due to the uh, more time sensitive UPWP item, um, we are moving that to August 22nd at 1 p.m. So please save that date. Uh, and as always, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out and thank you for all your continued support. Great, thank you, Jen. Um, now we will move to the Regional Transportation Advisory Council report, Len Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, we have not had a meeting since our last um... MPO meeting. I mean, we're also not having a regular meeting in August, I mean, but we are, um, some of us are doing a field trip I mean, to the Conley Ton um, Terminal but again. I mean, that will be on uh, Friday, not this Friday, on the 9th. I mean, um, uh, and um, I guess we, we'll be gathering around 9.30. I mean, so if anyone wants to um, join us on that, um, you're welcome to do so. We have some slots still available first come, um, first serve. So that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Len. Um, and if people are to, interested, just get in touch with me. The, I was going to say they can just email you if they're interested. Yeah, yeah. I'll dig in at gmail.com. You can also find my email address need on the um, website, or you can contact anyone on staff and they can relay it to me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, agenda item number seven is an action item, and that is to approve the June 6th MPO meeting minutes. Can I get a motion and a second? Brian Kane. Happy to move that forward, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Brian. General. Yes, um, I will second that motion with one very small tweak um, that in my Tipper Committee report, I uh, intended to say that we had, uh, the committee was talking about ways to, uh, additional ways for the MPO to support project development of TIP projects, not necessarily, um, I just want to make it clear that it's not necessarily increasing the, uh, or changing the amount of like financial support. That's the only small change. Okay. So with that clarification, um, Brian, unless you object to that, um, that will be the motion. I will. I, I think that's a friendly amendment, Mr. Chair, and yeah. I'm delighted yeah. to accept it. Great. Um, David, can we call the roll? 
Yes. Happy to. Derek Cravat. Derek Cravat, yes. John Bouchard. We'll return. Sandy Johnston. Sandy Johnston, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Eric Barasa. Eric Barasa, yes. Ryan Kane. Kane, yes. Len Diggins. Yes, yes. Jen Rowe. Jen Rowe, yes. Matthew Moran. Matthew Moran, yes. Jay Monty. Jay Monty, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. John Alessi. John Alessi, yes. Aaron Chute. Aaron Chute, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Kristen Guichard. Kristen Guichard, yes. Dennis Giambetti. Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Chris Diorio. Chris Diorio, yes. Tom O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, yes. Have I missed anyone on this roll call? Uh, with that, this motion carries and back to you, Mr. Chair. Great. Um, now we have another action item, which is uh, federal fiscal year 2024 to 2028 uh, TIP Amendment 12. And I'll pass it to you, Dave. Thank you so much. My name is Dave Hong, manager of MPO activities and member of the staff. I will present TIP Amendment 12. Next slide. Amendment 12 programs a federal earmark for the planning of the Wonderland multimodal modal connector in Revere. Given the funding will be administered by the MBTA, the funding must be obligated before FTA's closure of FY or FFY24 in mid-August. We are requesting the board to waive the public comment period as the FTA is closing their books in mid-August for the federal fiscal. This amendment also includes a rebalancing of funding sources for the procurement of six compressed natural gas vehicles for the Metro West Regional Transit Authority, increasing the proportion of matching funds on the project. For the MWRTA item, these source changes would typically only require a TIP adjustment, hence its inclusion here along with uh, within Amendment 12. If we move, as we move to the next slide to review uh, granulars for Revere um, or for the Revere Wonderland Multimodal Connector Planning Study, this line item includes $4 million of federal community project funding with $1 million in match to improve connectivity between the Wonderland station on the MBTA Blue Line and to plan for a potential commuter rail facility in the area in the future. On the next slide for MWRTA and its CNG vehicle replacements, this line item increases the amount of matching RTA capital funding uh, from $482,500 to $700,000. The federal share has decreased from $626,444 to $405,214. There is also a small overall cost decrease on this project. Um, on the very left column of the slide, the DA refers to the vehicle class, uh, which is a cutaway D-style van. The A means uh, it is an accessible low floor vehicle. Uh, next slide, please. The MPO staff then requests that the board votes to waive the public comment period for this amendment and endorse Amendment 12 as presented. While Amendment 12 would normally, it would normally go through and require a public comment period, one could not be held before August 15th with the time uh, between now and then. The public engagement plan um, as cited here notes that the MPO board may vote to waive the comment period um, as quoted below in emergency circumstances. Um, thank you. Um, I'm open to questions and I also yield back to the chair. Thank you. Um, is Tom um, Skoroski here from the city of Revere? Hi, Tom. Do, do you wanna give a little overview of um, the Wonderland project? Yeah, that would be uh, wonderful. And thank you, Eric. 
and thank you everybody for taking the time this morning to review this amendment. Um, I, I somewhat hastily put together a quick presentation this morning because I'm a visual learner, but um, emphasis on on quick. I'll, I'll run us through this project um, and and what it entails. I, I am seeing I'm not allowed to share screen. I don't know if that capability could be allowed. Wonderful. You should be able to now. Great. All right, are we seeing a PowerPoint here? Yeah, we can see it. All right, excellent. So um, the impetus for this project um, started in March of 2022 uh, when this uh, earmark was secured with Representative Clark and Senator Markey, as well as our state delegation, um, and really all of our local elected leaders coming behind this project, um, the Wonderland Multimodal Connector Study, because uh, you know ultimately this project serves a host of benefits, you know not just for Revere, but we think for the region. Um, and I'm going to go through those just briefly. Um, you know, first and foremost, I think this is an issue of transit justice. Um, we are the only community on the Newberry Port line that does not have a stop. Um, within Revere. Um, and so we basically only have the negative externalities of commuter rail, uh, the noise, the vibration in our homes, the, the diesel emissions, but um, don't actually get to take advantage of, of this resource. So, you know, fundamentally, you know, unfortunately that's par for the course often in Revere, whether um, we're speaking of air, rail, or, or car, we're often uh, the recipient of some of those negative impacts of our regional transportation networks. And so, you know, at its most fundamental level, this is really a request to ask why not us um, and and why can't Revere have an opportunity to have a, a stop just like all the other communities this line runs through. Um, but again, it's it's not just about us either. I think there are some really important regional connections that could be made, um, specifically connecting folks from the Newburyport line to uh, the Blue Line a bit quicker than traditionally as they'd have to go through to North Station. Um, I know our uh, neighbors in Lynn have been advocating for, for a long time to extend the blue line through to Lynn. And if that ever gets on the MPO's desk, I'll be first in line to extol the virtues of that project. And we want to make sure Lynn is connected and we can get as many folks off of their cars and into public transit as possible. But in the interim, um, I'd argue this is actually a more cost effective and simplified approach to connect folks with uh, the blue line from Lynn and other points north. Um, it's a faster connection to the silver line. It's a faster connection to the airport, to the seaport um, than exists today. And, and I think it really does provide some regional transit benefits. Um, in addition to that, I think it provides some regional benefits um, and you know, locally for us uh, with regard to tourism. So hopefully uh, some of the folks on this call had an opportunity to uh, go to the International Sand Sculpting Festival that was um, just a few weeks ago in Revere Beach, the nation's oldest public beach, I'm sure you're all aware, but, um, you know, the, the beach itself has undergone a resurgence as of late and, you know, the Sand Sculpting Festival and the thousands of people that attend that every year is really great evidence of that. Um, but, you know, if you did attend, I hope you didn't have to drive because it is a mess getting out of there and actually um, I was there and left with my kids as the fireworks were going off, which is kind of the, the local strategy to avoid the traffic, because um, if you stay until the end of the fireworks and you have to drive out of Revere Beach, it's a nightmare. Um, so I think this is also about giving folks that want to come to visit Revere, whether for the week or the day, um, quicker access to get here and, and less reliance on cars. Um, so there's an, an important kind of local economic benefit for us in that regard. And aside from the commuter rail itself, I think there's uh, some reasons why this is a critical moment for us in Revere where we can have this discussion. Um, there are two really important projects that are happening in the vicinity of uh, the study area. First and foremost, the uh, former Wonderland dog track site um, was purchased by the city of Revere about a year and a half ago um, with the intent to develop a high school um, and just this, um, Past June, our uh, the Revere City Council approved a $500 million bond to build the high school at the Wonderland site. Um, it's a pretty large site uh, that we own. It's about just under 40 acres, but it does have some wetlands issues to work around. So it, you know, functionally, it's not quite 40, um, but certainly has room and flexibility to build a commuter rail platform if uh, the state would be amenable to such a thing. 
Um, and at the same time, right across Route 60, we have our existing high school site, which will be redeveloped into a middle school. And so both of those sites are really effectively a blank canvas, not just for commuter rail planning, um, but to think of building multimodal connections um, from points east to west in the city and from um, other regional greenways throughout um, the Boston area. So, you know, often right away challenges when we're trying to build multimodal connections are the biggest challenges that uh, we often face in those kind of projects. And I just say here, we've got um, the connection from uh, Wonderland Station to the other side of Route 60, we have two property owners. Um, one of them is a city and one of them is a large commercial property developer. So at least as far as right away goes, it's a simpler project than most. Um, it also reconnects neighborhoods. So the neighborhoods um, on the, the eastern edge of Revere, which you know I think except for Boston, the city of Revere has built more housing than any community in the Boston area. And a lot of that has been east of uh, the Wonderland Station and along the beach. But unfortunately, those residents are, are pretty well isolated from the rest of the city and the region. If um, you don't have a car, your choices are pretty much to access the blue line and that's it. And we wanna make sure we're connecting folks from points east to points west in the city to connect with all of our various um, civic and cultural amenities in the other part of Revere. And of course, the other way around, we wanna make sure that we are effectively connecting residents in points west to uh, Wonderland Station, the Blue Line, Revere Beach, um, and everything that that entails. We've been working really hard with um, the MBTA and their Better Bus Network redesign program to help get Revere residents in the Western parts of Revere to start thinking about themselves as living in a transit-oriented community. And I think one of the big barriers to doing that is, um, you know, unless you are on a bus um, for most of Revere, although we have three T stops within our, our boundaries, it doesn't feel like a transit oriented place because as the crow flies, it might be close, but it's quite difficult to walk and bike there, especially if you're, um, you know, a vulnerable resident with, uh, you know, mobility challenges or if you're a family with young children. And finally, connecting with the bike to the sea. So we've been working with uh, Bike to the Sea to connect um, the Northern Strand Trail with Revere Beach and um, are moving along with a recently received grant from the Mass Gaming Commission to study an on-road connection um, from the Strand to the beach. But we always hit this point at Route 60. And then later on, as we get to North Shore Road, where you know I'm a father of three young children, and I'm always thinking about these connecting points. Is is this uh, a connection that I would want to take with with my family? Would I feel safe with my seven year old, my four year old biking um, across Route 60 and across North Shore Road? And I I just wouldn't. Um, and we're going to do our best to make it a safe connection. But I think there's a real opportunity here to build um, a safer off road connection um, to from this path and from other points in West Revere to Wonderland Station and beyond. So, um, you know, again, I think there's a host of benefits, walkability, transit oriented and reason, regional transportation connects to this project. Happy to answer any questions you might have about it. And, and overall, I'm just really grateful that this is in front of you today and urge you to support this project. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, so why don't we start with just questions about um, this Revere um, project. And then if folks have questions about Metro West, we can take that afterwards. So Sandy. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to offer a little bit of framing from the T side about how we're handling this. And again, thank you to the MPO for considering this in a somewhat unconventional process. Um, so this earmark was, uh, you know, allocated initially to the city and to, to MassDOT. And uh, between us and MassDOT, we determined that it would be better handled on the MBTA side. So what we're asking you to do today with the TIP amendment is to flex it into to MBTA. Um, and the project is going to be incorporated, the feasibility study is going to be incorporated into um, the Blue Line Master Plan, which my colleague Scott Hamway is here, if folks have questions about that. I see Ken has his hand raised. Maybe Ken can tell more, correct anything I've said about the process. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to offer that <clears throat> we are here as a resource of, uh, to answer any questions available about that folks may have about how the T is going to handle this as well. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, Ken. Uh, no, I'm, I have nothing to correct. I just uh, just a question about um, where this is because I, I look. It's not it's not a highway infrastructure 
uh, in the in the uh, in the appropriations bill. So is this uh, I don't know. Can can staff clarify exactly what year this appropriations was, and and wh whether it was a transit infrastructure earmark or a highway? Because it's not a highway infrastructure earmark. So. Derek, can you clarify? Yeah. 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 This was uh, I think originally in the 2022 Federal Appropriations Act, and it was on the transit side. So it was one of two transit earmarks that year. Thank you, Chris. Yep. All right, so we we really have nothing to do with it. Okay, great. <laughs> yep. Thanks. <laughs> um, I, I have a question, Sandy. So um, I, MAPC, you know, very, very big supporters of this concept and happy that, that there's this year mark. Um, is the MBTA looking at this um, Newbury port, you know, Rockport, uh, line um, comprehensively because I believe Salem got a grant to design like a new a new South Salem commuter rail station. This would be an additional commuter rail station. We know City of Everett would love to have a commuter rail station, you know, at the casino. What does that do if we build more more um, you know stations? How does that impact the line? How does that impact the commute for people coming from the north? Is there any sort of corridor planning that's being done to think about those things like all together? So I'm probably not the best person to speak comprehensively to this, but the short answer is yes. Our rail modernization railroad ops teams are, you know, aware of all these projects and thinking about how it's going to impact the line, how it's going to impact the ability to implement kind of early action items toward the regional rail vision that will allow improving of, improvement of service in the shorter term. Uh, as well as looking at the longer term kind of fundamental transformation of the line to something that's providing more full spectrum, frequent decarbonized service. Um, we could potentially arrange a presentation on that at some point if folks are interested. Um, but yes, as you say, Eric, there's a lot of different ideas out there. Um, and anytime you're touching rail infrastructure like that, it requires some very careful kind of integrated infrastructure and service planning to see what the impacts are going to be. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions about this TIP amendment? Are you not seeing any? Um, can I have a motion and a second? General. I'll uh, motion to approve this amendment and just uh, express uh, my personal gratitude for this. I And uh, also to, just to Tom for showing up and, and sharing a little bit more about the project. At first, I was like, what? I haven't heard about this thing. What is this? Um, but um, uh, he did a great job putting it into the, the regional context um, and as someone who my first uh, place I landed in the Boston region was in Revere's Beachmont neighborhood and I would bike to the high school where I was teaching chemistry uh, very poorly, but um, I, I, I can definitely uh, speak to the need for that kind of uh, east-west connection. So very enthusiastic to support this. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Tom? Uh, I will second that, uh, this motion. Great. So with a motion and a second, uh, Dave, can you call the roll? Of course. Derek Cravat. Derek Cravat, yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. Sandy Johnston. Sandy Johnston, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Eric Barasa. Eric Barasa, yes. Uh, Hannah Switlikowski. Hannah Switlikowski, yes. Next is... Uh, Len Diggins. Diggins, yes. Jen Rowe. Jen Rowe, yes. Matthew Moran. Matthew Moran, yes. Jay Monty. Jay Monty, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. John Alessi. John Alessi, yes. Aaron Shute. Aaron Shute, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Kristen Guichard. Dennis Giambetti. Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Chris Diorio. Chris Diorio, yes. Tom O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, yes. And uh, just returning back to Kristen Guichard, if Mike is available. Uh, other than that, have I missed anyone else on the roll? This motion also carries, and back to you, Mr. Chair. Great. 
Thank you all. Thank you, Tom, for a great overview. Um, let's see, what is next on the agenda? The MPO MOU progress update, Aaron McGuire. Thank you, Eric. I will kick it off. Oh, okay. uh, thank you. I am tasked with delivering an update on the Memorandum of Understanding Update Committee's work. As we move to the next slide, for context, in response to the findings from the Federal Certification Review in 2022, an ad hoc MOU update committee was formed the following year to address one corrective action and a set of other recommendations that would guide the current MO M MOU update committee's actions. The ad hoc committee met three times in 2023, and in, in September of that year, the MPO board approved a set of interim MOU revisions. The remaining recommendations drove six work modules that are now reflected in the current iteration of the draft MOU. Next slide, please. Uh, just to provide an overview of those six modules, in module one, staff-led content updates, including adding further clarity to voting rules and balancing content between the MOU and the operations plan. For additional context, the Memorandum of Understanding, uh, which is the MOU, is the high-level governance document of the MPO, and the operations plan supplements detailed procedures helping to meet the agreements laid out in the MOU. Module two zeroed in on revising language about the role of the Regional Transportation Advisory Council to clarify its mission and role, outline its relationship with the board, staff, the public engagement program, and to clearly define a vision and set a uh, set of goals for the council's ongoing work. Module three entailed negotiations between MAPC and CTPS to iron out its fiduciary relationship and to formalize respective responsibilities. In module four, the committee worked, uh, the MOU update committee worked with the RTAs to arrive at a mutual agreement on the RTA's role vis-a-vis -vis this board. Module five entailed MPO staff working with MassDOT, the MBTA, MWRTA, and CADA to formalize how we collaborate to meet the MPO's commitments including our 3C planning requirement and bring timely and to bring timely information to the board regarding its investment programs and projects. Module six finally looked at how the MPO can support board members in education, peer exchange and development opportunities. Next slide. To provide a summary of work and what lies ahead um, as we look at uh, kind of Top to bottom, the MOU update committee met in January of this year to formalize a work plan and commence work on the modules as described in the previous slide between January and now, meeting once to twice a month to review milestone progress. Today, we will walk you through a summary of revisions to the MOU um, and provide you uh, an opportunity to continue to review the MOU document that was shared with this board on July the 26th and bring a request to vote on the MOU draft on the, at the next MPO meeting, August 15th, while of course incorporating your comments. In August to September then, staff will review and address uh, public comments. And in September to October, staff will collect member signatures um, on the revised MOU prior to the annual meeting in November. Next slide, please. So as a refresher, but also for those who joined the board more recently, the Memorandum of Understanding, the MOU, describes who makes up the MPO, what members are responsible for, our common mandate, and why the MPO exists, whereas the operations plan uh, delves into more of the how, that is, what is the process by which agencies collaborate and share information, and what is the workflow and when throughout the year do certain events need to occur so that it serves both as a reminder and a commitment to or for governance. Before I pass the baton on to my colleague, Aaron, I wanna to pause to see if the board um, has 
questions on information I've shared to this point, uh, yield back to the chair to take any take any questions. Any questions? Um, Priyanka, I see you have your hand raised. Do you have a question? Uh, no, there? sorry, sorry. I guess it's it it was raised by mistake. I'll... Fine, I, I do that sometimes. So, hmm. uh, <laughs> any any questions for for Dave? Okay, not seeing any. Back to you, Dave or Aaron. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions offline by email as well, of course, at any point. I will pass the baton on to Aaron McGuire. Thank you. Thank you. If we could go to the next slide, please. So hello, everyone. My name is Aaron McGuire. I'm a transportation planner on staff with the Boston Region MPO. As Dave mentioned, we're going to be bringing a draft MP MOU for you all to vote to release for a 21-day public comment period at our next meeting on August 15th. Today, I'm gonna to be providing a brief summary of changes that have occurred between the September 2023 MOU and the draft that is in front of you today. Deliberations that led to this draft were held in the MOU update committee. A big thank you to all of our committee members for your continued engagement throughout this process. For today's discussion, you can find the draft MOU posted to the meeting calendar, along with the short memorandum that will summarize the key changes that we're also gonna be walking through. Ultimately, changes fell into seven key categories, those being committee and staff-led clarifications, the Regional Transportation Advisory Council description, the MAPC and CTPS fiduciary agent agreement reference, establishing the role of regional transit authorities in decision-making, updating the agency collaboration description, updating expectations for board member education and development, and finally, some minor editorial revisions. Next slide, please. Staff and committee-led clarifications would address points of ambiguity or other areas that simply had to be updated in our current MOU. This includes updating our current MPO membership, updating the list of signatories on the document and rele relevant whereas statements, updating references to the current and previous MOUs throughout the document, outlining voting rules and the documents that they specifically apply to, revising language that discusses the geographic distribution of projects in our region, and finally, revising the description of our long-range transportation planning practices. Next slide, please. Revisions to the Regional Transportation Advisory Council description can be found in section 2D of the draft document, and they were developed in close consultation with the Advisory Council. Conversations with this group emphasize the importance of the Advisory Council's role on the board and the space that it provides for education about the MPO's work and for providing guidance and advice on that work. The mission of the goal of the group is outlined around the goals of equity, accountability, and engagement. Next slide, please. The 2022 Federal Certification Review recommended that the MPO and the RTAs that operate trans public transportation in the region reach an agreement about how RTAs would be represented in the regional transportation planning and decision-making process. On April 18th of this year, the board voted for a new seat to be approved for these RTAs. Functionally, this is a seat for the RTAs, currently the Metro West Regional Transit Authority and the Cape Ann Transportation Authority, who would serve a two-year term before rotating to the other agency. Next slide, please. Updates that are related to the fiduciary agent agreement, you can find in section 3D, and this ultimately discusses who CTPS is and what its administrative relationship with MAPC looks like. Next slide. There were also several instances throughout the draft MOU where paragraphs have simply been relocated throughout their original spot within sections. So some examples of this can be found in the introduction when discussing transportation planning and the 3C process at, at large and then also when describing the functions and roles of the Boston Region MPO and its committees. Next slide. And finally, there are several items that have been relocated out of the MOU into the operations plan. This is to allow for processes to be defined more regularly and also updated than in this formal MOU document. 
Some of these topics include updates to agency collaboration and information sharing, which is a topic that was charged to the MOU update committee. Additionally, we recommend moving the committee appointment process, information on the development of financial targets for the TIP and LRTP, and the TIP development process as a whole into the operations plan, again, to allow for more timely updates. And with that, I will pass it back to Dave to just walk us through some final steps. Thank you. So staff will intake comments and suggestions you have until August the 6th um, as a target to address and incorporate into the draft for public release. Uh, we acknowledge that this is a quick turnaround time and, and this will help MPO staff meet the overall timeline to bring uh, the work to completion. However, if this review uh, window poses any challenges for members, please let me know. Uh, we also had uh, some questions come in through email and uh, we have um, responses drafted. I'm just vetting that now. Um, and so we'll get that back to you um, in a timely way. Uh, we will then request a motion at our next MPO meeting on August the 15th to release the draft MOU for a 21 day public comment period. Um, thank you. I do welcome questions at this point and yield back to the chair. Thank you, Dave. Any questions about the uh, MOU update? Okay, not seeing any, um, we can move on. So um, I am up next to talk about the municipal uh, election uh, for 2024. So just as a little background, um, you know, every year we uh, have an election for uh, four of the 12 municipally elected seats on the MPO. Uh, MAPC and the MBTA Advisory Board oversee that election process. Um, this year, the seats that are up for election are the um, at-town city seat that is currently held by the city of Newton the at-large at town seat that is currently held by the town of Arlington, the Three Rivers Interlocal Council seat that is currently held by the town of Norwood, and the North Suburban um, subregion seat, which is currently held by the town of Burlington. Those seats are up for election. Um, the process this year is that we're gonna get um, the election procedures out uh, next week, uh, the election procedures will have all the details about um, who can vote. It's the municipal, um, you know, chief elected official in each municipality. Um, the voting is all done electronically now. We have a, a link um, for uh, for the nomination process and then for the for the voting. The nomination process will last um, all of August and September, and we're we're looking for nominations to be due. Um, on, I believe, hold on one second. I believe it is Monday, August 7th. Um, and I will be coming to uh, the September TRIC and North Suburban subregion meetings to, to discuss this more. Um, and then we will get a ballot out on, uh, again, electronic ballot out on October uh, 9th. And the voting will last for two weeks electronically. Uh, it will close on the 23rd of October. And we're gonna announce the results at the October 24th MPO meeting. This is a little different than what it says in the operations plan and what we've done traditionally. We traditionally, and in the operations plan, say we will announce um, the uh, results of the elections at the fall uh, MAPC council meeting, which typically takes place at the end of October. For a number of, of scheduling reasons, the MA, MAPC fall council meeting is gonna be um, likely on October 10th. And in consultation with, with staff, we, we did not wanna squeeze the process for this. And so we felt we wanted to give the, the usual about two months for nominations and two weeks for voting. Um, and so we're gonna announce the results on, uh, at, the, at the MPO meeting on October 24th. And so um, unless there are any objections to that, that is the process uh, that we are gonna you know, move forward with. 
and um, I'm happy to take any questions. So not seeing any questions, all of those materials will be sent out um, on Monday. And uh, if there are individual NPO members that want to, you know, talk to me about it, I'm happy. Um, and 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 Brian as well, happy to have any, you know, discussion. And uh, David Kosis, I see your hand raised. Yeah, uh, thank you, Eric. Can you just say again um, the date that the nominations are due? Did you say it's you Monday, say October seventh? Monday, October seventh. Okay, that's what I thought you meant. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, and the nominations are very easy. There's three nominations that um, municipalities need to get. A municipality can nominate themselves. And again, it's an electronic nomination form. In the old days, it was paper and people had to run around and get signatures. Um, it's a it's a DocuSign, you know, electronic document now, a lot, a lot easier process than um, in previous years. Uh, again, I, I'm happy, you know, once once we send those materials out and people get a chance to look at them, I'm happy to meet with any um, interested uh, municipalities and, and, and walk them through what that process is, which is fairly straightforward, but um, ha happy to do that. Great. So um, that is agenda number 10. Uh, and we can go to the last item, which are, is member items. Um, any members items? Uh, Christy Orio. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, I just want to let everyone know that the TIP funded project to reconstruct uh, Atlantic Avenue and Hull is nearing completion and uh, it looks great. Uh, it's really been a game changer for that neighborhood with the new bike lanes and sidewalks, We've seen a lot more bikes a lot more pedestrians, so it's it's been really great. And uh, so I just want to thank everyone for their uh, support of that project. Great, we'll have to do a field trip. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Next summer, maybe. Um, let's see, Len, did you have your hand raised? Yes, I did, or or, or before and after study on that one. Huh? Uh, uh, anyways, I, I just wanted to let people know that uh, with re regards to the field trip to the Conley uh, Terminal, um, anyone that's listening to this or watching this and, um, is invited, and once again, it's on a first come, um, basis mean and and um, and if you could get back to me by Monday um, end of the day on Monday that would be great thank you okay. so not seeing anyone else's hand raised um, can I have a motion to adjourn I'll raise my hand again in motion to adjourn motion <laughs> is there a second Tom Ben I'll second that motion okay then um Thank you everyone for a great meeting today and without objection we we are adjourned and we'll see you in a couple of weeks take care